Someone wrote in about we've been we had some videos about insul and people that are involuntarily yep. celibate, and someone that's wrote, what insul stands for. Yes, um, and someone wrote in and said that most people think I'm creepy because they I, I, my looks are not matched up to their perceived attraction level, and that he believes that people see someone who's not attractive as creepy. And I wanted to deconstruct that a little bit because I think they're very different things. This is Reed Mahalko from ReadAboutSex.com. Kathy Vartilli from TheIntimacyDojo.com. I'm going, I'm going interior here because this is, this is good. This is rich, yeah. dense stuff. Yeah. Um, what do you got? So I think that there, it's easy for us to associate um, people that are not physically, don't cookie cutter match what society says is, is pretty mm-hmm. with creepiness because often those are overlapped with shame. People that are bigger or short, like men that are shorter. Some of us, like if we're not matching what society says is ideally handsome, we maybe have shamed a lot, or we may have experiences that leave us with shame, mm-hmm. and that can leave us approaching someone with shame and uncomfortableness can create a sense of of like people don't know why we're approaching them. There's an unease there, mm-hmm. versus. People that have cleared shame or don't have never had that shame, it doesn't matter if they um, what they look like. They're they're not coming across as creepy or uncomfortable. And I've met plenty of very conventionally handsome people that were very creepy. So to me, their their looks and creepiness are separate things. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to think about the easiest way to or the most powerful way to, to reframe this or to think about it, uh, what is the trickiest is somebody who has a lot of cultural reinforcement that something's wrong with them, yeah. who's also shy um, and maybe introverted. Because the, the things that are easiest, I think, to do when you think about how to make other people feel comfortable. That advice is really useful and easiest to adapt from people who are extroverted. Yes. Because it requires a certain amount of me taking my agency, uh, being empowered to take action in a way where I'm deconstructing really quickly for the other person that I know what's going on. When you are self-aware and you can prove your self-awareness to people in a way that's not pressury, that seems to land on many people as not creepy. And that is a that is a very what I just said took me 40 years to start to master being the weird, goofy, big white guy hanging out with a bunch of people, activists, who do not like white guys. And what I do basically is like, hi, I'm Reed. You probably don't like white guys. Probably, especially extroverted white guys. I'm that guy. And I'm up to date on most of the current ideas around feminism, intersectional, um, you know, geekery and oppressive systematic and social dynamics. May I talk to you? And that I've laid out that I've, that I've spoken to what is the landscape and done it in a way where I'm not pulling, please talk to me, please talk. Like I'm, I'm controlling my energy, but I'm stating the it's not really the obvious because sometimes the obvious is what culture tells us and really what's obvious is that what culture tells us is bullshit yeah um but i am declaring who i am and what my intentions are in a polite way and asking for consent to proceed that's a lot easier for extroverted um non-shy people to to do and it also helps if you're not starving yeah and 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 it also helps if 
you haven't had life just kick the shit out of you yeah. so that your you know your anxiety level um, not anxiety is not the right word but like your your nervous system is just electrified when you're trying to break the ice with somebody so again like there's a lot of privilege that I have but the 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 advice or the technique the approach I think is useful it's just how do we get people to that yeah I think for me as a shy person it's it's easier to come across creepy sometimes because if we think we don't deserve something there's two ways that I that I really see people being creepy with me is one they either come up and say I'm gonna ask you something and I'm putting all the responsibility for my well-being on you mm -hmm. and if you say no you're gonna destroy me and it's your fault yeah and I didn't get I agree to that that feels icky to me that feels like well and I don't and I, and I would say that that might not be creepy but it doesn't create ease for the person right yeah. like I feel but I feel like there's a pulling like they're trying to get something from me that I did not agree to yeah so to me that I don't define that as creepy okay um, and the other thing is if someone's trying to get something from me without disclosing they're trying to get something they don't deserve there's a sneaky agenda yeah and Unfortunately, if we feel ashamed, like if I want to ask somebody out and I don't feel like I deserve it, mm -hmm. if I don't feel like I deserve to have that person come go out with me, I'm in my brain, I'm thinking I'm trying to sneak by the fact that he, I, he doesn't, he'd never go out with me. And then that comes across sometimes as creepy, even though we're just really shy. Sure. Yeah, the hesitancy can feel weird. Like, like, like rather than creepy, let's just say weird. Okay. Like, but because there's like awkward, like, oh, that was awkward. And then there's like, um, this is like, this is weird, awkward. Yeah. Right. So again, like if you, if you imagine also like flip the video, all this is going on for everybody else. Yeah, too. The other people are receiving it too. We think everyone's got their shit handled. They look like it from the outside. The rest of the world is just, everyone's rico suave and yeah, <laughs> the world's easy. And now the handsome extroverted people, yeah, they don't have a care in the world. Everybody does. Everybody's freaking out in their own head. Yeah. But what I do, and I learned this from you actually, is when I, it, because I know I can come off hesitant because I am shy, I will actually start with it. I'll say, hey, I'm really shy. It's hard for me to talk to you. And then it just normalizes it. Yeah. They, under, they have a context. They know I'm not trying to manipulate. I'm owning who I am. And I'm, I'm willing to take care of who I am. It's not your responsibility because I'm shy. I'm just owning it so you have a context. I have done... Yep. Yeah, I thought I scratched you. Sorry. Oh, um, I have done in situations because again, like I didn't always look like this growing up, and I have a lot of insecurities from having an alcoholic mom and 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 a father that lied about stuff. So I don't think I deserve a lot of things. And then when like I'm interested in somebody who's I think is too pretty for me, um. I just learned to lead with, again, extrovert, a little bit easier sometimes, is to be like, hi, I want to hit on you or ask you out on a date, but honestly, I think you're too pretty for me to do that. Like I'm in my fifth grader weirdness, but I'm, I want to, to try anyway. May I ask you out for coffee? Yes or no? And again, like for people, they're just like, what? And then I just literally repeat exactly what I said. Because as I'm doing it, the other piece that's interesting, right? And the reason we talked about, like, admit that you're shy. Mm -hmm. When you admit the thing that you're afraid of, it takes so much of its power away. Like, you're freer. It was terrifying the first few times I did it. And then I just, the, the process was so... I built such good connections with people and some people were just like whatever and, but I survived and it was like wow I'm owning who I am it felt really good so it started getting easy and the people who are like whatever I don't you want to hang out with them anyway you couldn't have snuck by them anyway with some yeah. weird under under the rug agenda anyway yeah. and ultimately you want people who like you for you yeah you know and then you're like oh and then word gets out like other shy people go to Kathy and like I you, like you admit that you're shy and Kathy's like yeah and they're like oh my god that's so inspiring and now you're inspiring to people which is the opposite of, of you can be inspiring and shy but like inspiring people is helps build you up rather than you shrinking yeah. again this is advice from an extroverted golden retriever on espresso 
but the approach when you can find your words and speak up, yeah. um, try to start there. Yeah, and I, I think it's important not to blame other people responding to us as being creepy on how we might look. There are certainly some people that are like, you don't deserve to talk to me because you're not like Rico Suave. I don't want to go out with people like that anyway because we're all changing and growing. But for most people, it's more our energy around how we're approaching them. And if we've been rejected a bunch of times, there can be kind of like either a defensiveness or like you owe me. The last five people said no. Cleaning that up can make a big difference. Even having the self-awareness that you notice your own body language and you're like, oh, wow. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna adopt a body language that's a little bit more open. Again, I'm not going to advocate like being masters at bo- reading body language because I'm always going to be about words and consent. And but, authenticity. But your self-awareness in how you're being is the foot in the door to the rest of it. Um, again, you know, if you're somebody in this situation who feels like they're unconventionally, you know, like you're, you're, you just don't look conventionally pretty, I'll, I will make that mean, you know, shorten it to be like, you think you're ugly, right? Like you're, like you're elephant man hideous. If you want to meet people and make them feel, you know, more relaxed, generally I would lead with, oh, hi, you know, just, you know, like I'm aware that I look like this and then people relax. Like my friends, they're all, this works in all many different, any different situations. Like I've had situations where I had to talk to somebody and I just cut my forehead and I'm bleeding down my face, but I needed to talk to this person. It's a long story. And I just led with, hi, just so you know, I'm aware that I'm bleeding down my face right now. We're fine. I'm fine, but I needed to ask you something. And they like totally changed. Whereas if I ignored it, they're like, does he know? They're like, what's going on? Yeah. So long video. We apologize. Leave some comments. What's useful? What's not useful? These are baby steps into maybe feeling more empowered in the world. Yeah, and just what Reed said about acknowledging that you're not pretty or that you, whatever, that can actually be really relaxing. I often will drop into a conversation early on, friends, coworkers, whatever, that I know I'm a big person, changes the energy completely. We're not all trying to pretend something different. Yeah, and culture is filling us with bullshit advice. Yeah. So, and, and I guess we're part of culture now, so maybe we're full of it too. But Hopefully not. what makes you feel more empowered and also helps uplift other people. Yeah. Let's let's walk in that direction. Yeah. Thanks very much. Leave comments below. Thanks for tuning in, Sex Geek. If you would like to continue with the brain sex, do me a favor and click subscribe right here. If you'd like to watch me on social media, that's where you're going to go. Next video, maybe? And if you really would like your own Sex Geek t-shirt, please click right here, right now. Boop. No, no, really, like...